After e4, e5, d4, take the pawn, and c3, take the pawn, bishop c4, and now you take the other pawn. So the white player is playing the Danish gambit, gambiting a lot of stuff, but obviously after bishop b2, now white has got some really good development. Now, as mentioned in the previous videos, you know exactly now how to deal with this. Uh, there's just one last mention I need to make before we close the final chapter. Knight f6 now. e5 straight away with an attack on the knight. Bishop b4 check. Knight to d2. This is a line that has to be met now with d5. Now, if you want to know all the reasons behind this move, you know, white can take your piece, but you can take the opponent piece, and there's also a check, but it's useless. All the things you need to know, make sure you watch the other videos of the Danish Gambit before you watch this one here the move we're going to go through is bishop b5 check this is another uh, one of the mo main moves here it's very popular and it, you gotta know what to deal with this now here the tendency is to play c6 it's, it feels kind of natural to just attack the bishop with c6 and you know you got an attack on this piece but that's bad and that's exactly one of the plans of the white player here after they take your knight and you take the opponent piece back you have an isolated pawn in d5 which will be subject to future target so the best move in this position is to save the knight from the attack on the pawn, uh, of the pawn, and then move the knight back to d7, blocking the check. Okay, white goes on with development, knight f3, castle, and now you're out of trouble forever. That's it, it's just winning, it's position evaluated minus 2, the reason being that simply the, the, the gambit didn't go anywhere, the, the white player didn't checkmate you, therefore the gambit failed, and now you just carry on with a winning advantage. Castle. Okay. Knight c5 by black. This is the perfect square to put the knight. It's not a problem. If white takes your knight, you can take back with the knight. It's good to have a knight in d7 because you can go to e5, potentially preventing the knight in f3 from ever moving. As soon as that knight moves, then you can build an attack on the pawn. And this pawn is not is not strong. And f4 is never going to be able to support this pawn because you've still got the dark square bishop. Um, also, you want to play c5 at some point. Playing c6 is completely useless. So, knight to c5. A3 attacking the bishop. Where do we place the bishop? Of course, we don't trade. We go to A5. And now, there's no moves. There literally is no move for the for our opponent. Pawn pushing is not possible. You could just develop the bishop. There's no compensation. The bishop going anywhere doesn't do anything. And a move like rook c1 looks like the most active. Black just plays bishop to b6, and that's it. There's no no dangers, no problems at all. If white plays a4 with the idea of playing a5 and removing the bishop from the defense of this knight. Here he plays c6, and now the bishop has to move. If the bishop doesn't move, but rather white plays a5, you know, you take the, the bishop, and when you get taken back, this knight will still be defended, and our opponent's just given up. Black takes back with the pawn, which is crazy, because you got a triple pawn, tripled up and isolated, but position is evaluated minus 250, or something like that. This position is just as solid as ever. Black, white has lost any possible advantage. The rook is on an open file, and this is the best that white can do in a faulty variation. So in this position after rook c1 and bishop to b6, a4, c6, what if white saves the bishop pair and plays this move? Okay, play a5 because obviously you don't want a5 to happen, you'd lose material. So a5 comes now and again position is just, just as solid as ever. There is no getting through, there's no winning plans by white. Okay, last mention in this position instead of rook c1, what if white plays knight to b3? The idea of attacking this bishop and try to take advantage of you know of the open files, which of course now it's not possible in e1 because of our bishop. So what to play here? Here we take the knight, queen takes back, and now c5. This bishop remains here, putting pressure on e1, stopping the rook from developing. Rook a to d1, putting more pressure on this pawn in d5. Bishop a6 developing. The bishop can never be removed with knight g5 or something, because obviously that square is occupied. Bishop c3. With the idea of swapping with this, our tremendous bishop doesn't work because of d4 winning the game. There's a pawn attack on the bishop, there's a bishop attack on the queen. And now it's not like the bishop can just take our bishop and say, you know, I'm attacking the queen. Because you're just winning. Now you take the queen, they take your queen, you take the rook. And now if rook takes back, then you take back and you got two rooks in the knight against one rook and two mana pieces. So you're winning the exchange with even more advantage. If instead bishop goes to e7 attacking the rook, the rook can't move anywhere here. It will have to go to c8, but then you lose the bishop. Here you take the knight, desperate move. Bishop takes rook. And now here you take back, pawn takes back, and you're easily winning this endgame. You got huge advantage. So in this position, we mentioned that the plan with bishop c3 doesn't work. Bishop c4, finalizing the attack on this pawn doesn't work also because you can just take the bishop. 
Rook takes your queen, but then you're winning your opponent queen, so you're actually up in material. So what happens after white plays queen a4, which is the best move recommended by the engine? Okay, knight to d7, develop. White has no moves, absolutely no moves that make any sense. You can look at this position on the board for as long as you want and try to find a plan for the white player that just isn't. Let's see now, h3, for example, just to make a move, okay? a6, this is our plan, we're attacking the bishop, the bishop has to move, e, uh, bishop e2, d4. Now we're advancing our pass pawns. Now here, there's not bishop c4 trying to swap with our bishop doesn't work because b5 wins the game for black. So, queen to c2, protecting uh, the d file a bit further, put the queen, uh, or putting pressure on the pawn, rook to e8. Okay, let's look at this, bishop c1, maybe the idea of going to g5, try to find some counterplay like that, h6. And now, let's make an example, if the knight moves to d2, it looks like the knight might have potential to go to some really decent squares. You just take here, there's nothing. Knight can't go to c4, you can trade. Knight to e4 instead, you just push the pawn to c4. And that's it, you threaten in d3. Doesn't get any easier than this. And in this position, to make another example, if the bishop moves to c4, trying to take this important bishop in e6, you just take, take. And now this move will be enough to close the game. If knight takes, the rook will take back and defend this pawn. If the queen takes this pawn first, Let's say queen takes in c5. Okay, first bishop b6 attacks the queen. Queen has to move, let's say queen c2. And now d3. Queen moves once again, but either way, just take, pawn takes. Queen h4 comes now, finalizing the pressure over h3 and winning the game like that. Also threatening rook e2, finalizing the pressure over the square f2. If instead tr white tries to counterattack, let's say queen d3. Queen g3 is checkmate to come soon. King moves. Check, king moves, rook e5, finishes the game. Oh, and by the way, f4 doesn't work, because queen check. I think you can get the rook to go this way. Ro queen can't just block, because the pawn in f2 is pinned. One last mention before we close with this rubbish opening. Take, and now c3, take. Sometimes they will play this move, which is the more solid one. Knight takes c3, but it's also... It also it's just not even to be considered a gambit because the other gambit, the one where black gives everything here, all of these pawns, is actually fairly dangerous. If you don't know what to do, you're going to lose a lot of games. In this one, th this is just not a gambit because now we, you'll see we're in perfect time to do anything we want. Bishop c5, normal developing move. Bishop c4, d6. You see, now we play normal moves. Knight f3. White just doesn't have an attack. Knight f6. This position was actually mentioned once at the first video of this saga with us looking at h3, stopping bishop g4 idea, 9c6, 9d4 and all that. Very tradi traditional idea. Let's look at this move now, e5 straight away, so we can close the chapter. Now here it's important to take this pawn, and after queen takes, king takes, it's fine for us to give up that material. Knight takes back with a threat on knight f7, rook e8 pins the knight, and now a move like f4 protecting the knight is just met with knight c6. And that's it, you're just going to capture, capture and win the game, right? The game doesn't get any easier at this point. If instead in this position white protects the knight with the bishop, develop the bishop, protects the square f7 a little bit more, after castle with check, king c8. This is completely fine for black by the way. Bishop takes, it's the last trick we take with the pawn in order not to lose the pawn in f7 with the threat of, you know, mate here. Yeah, it's not like it was going to be that much of a problem, but anyway, you take back. And again, we preserve the pawn advantage, but this is once again the more solid variation that white can play. It's not really the, it's not really the Danish gambit, rather, I mean, yes, it is the Danish gambit, but it's not as dangerous. Now here we're going to continue the games. There's loads of things that can, that can happen. So, but now you know how to play the top engine moves to neutralize the attack. While playing f3, stopping us from winning the pawn, you just play b6. And that's how you're going to play the king to b7 and carry on like this. In this position, if white plays knight to a4, attacking this bishop, threatening to take it, you just play bishop d6 and now this knight is misplaced. It will have to go back where it was. So that's a silly idea. If instead, let's say white continues with development. Plays rook to e1, okay, king to b7. Now we're kind of castling the king somehow. Knight to d3, attacking our bishop, bishop f8. And knight to b5, putting more pressure on this pawn, is met with knight to d5. This is a very important move protecting everything and threatening to take this strong bishop okay bishop to g3 knight to c6 fin finishing development okay let's look at this idea king to b1 the idea is to put the rook 
um, to pressure on this knight. Rook a to d8, rook c1. None of this is going anywhere. Play a6, the knight goes back and now back to d6. And we should be able to swap with this very strong bishop. And yeah, so the Danish gambit is neutralized.